It is our first day here in Portugal and we are in the big capital city of Lisbon. It's the largest city in Portugal and so we're just gonna walk around, check it out, see the historical sites and get to the water today. And we already got some coffee. There's lots of seating out here in the open but we're on the go today so I just took it to go. We are not staying very close to like the downtown cool area of Lisbon so we are walking there right now and this street is very, very busy. There's lots of people, lots of cars, lots of buildings. But we're heading that way. Right off the bat, the first thing I noticed about Lisbon is these beautiful, bright colored buildings. They're all around. I'm pretty sure they're just people's like apartments and businesses, but they're so, so, so pretty. And one of the first things that I noticed is the elevation change of these streets. We've mainly just been walking downhill because we're getting closer to the water and closer to just the, the downtown area. And so the walking has actually been extremely easy. But as we make our way back up the hill later in the day, it might get a little more difficult. This is the famous Tram 28 here. I think locals used it for transportation and now it's like a really famous thing. So there are a lot of tours on it, but I think people actually just used it for transportation. It goes like right along the road. That's kind of cool. just walking and we looked up and we we're like oh look at all those colorful buildings they're so pretty let's film it and then we realized that St. George's Castle is like right above them we have a really good view of it here we probably aren't gonna go in it because it's like $16 per person I mean I think mostly the outside of castles is the cool part so uh turns out it's actually <laughs> Jorge's castle <laughs> And we just learned that it was built in the 11th century. That is so crazy. So long ago. And I'm pretty sure Lisbon is like the oldest city either in Western Europe or in all of Europe. Yeah, so like the, cool. Yeah, that's so amazing. Anytime a city or a building is just extremely old, we're always just like, that's insane. Like, that's it's honestly so impressive that it lasts that long. Like, I don't know if any of these modern buildings will last like a thousand years. This sightseeing bus seems to be pretty uh, busy. There is lots and lots of tourists here and we're not even here during like peak season. Did tourists ruin Lisbon? Did, <laughs> did they? We have this really cool statue, but I don't know why it's significant. And then we have all these tuk tuks here. They're trying to get us to hop in. Our plan today has just been to walk straight to the water and see any cool things along the way. And then once we're down there, We'll check out that area. It has been way too long since we've been by the ocean, so we are literally beelining there and we can see it and it makes me happy. I have to say I really like the designs of these sidewalks. I mean, this one right here, you can see them. It's just really cool. The, the tile, is it tile? I don't know what it is. Oh, we're crossing the street now. I really love it, but also we've been seeing people like dragging their suitcases across here because they're just like little pieces. Like they're having a really rough time, so. I think this is why we travel with our, our backpacks and not with rolling suitcases. Just makes it so much easier when you're in Europe. We're now just a couple minutes away from the water and we've made it to this giant square. There's another statue with somebody on a horse. This one looks a little bit uh, more detailed. There's a lot more going on. And it's a lot bigger than the last one. <laughs> it's huge, there's a lot of people. This there's, square is massive. There's some really cool buildings all around us. This like honestly is giving me like South American vibes. I think they're like kind of similar. This city might be like the best of both worlds. Like you get a little Europe and a little bit of like South American. I really like it. I was missing South America, so it's good. What Jenny was saying definitely makes sense because South America has a lot of Spanish and Portuguese influence. And so it totally makes sense. Like this is kind of reminding me of when we were in Lima in Peru. That's exactly what I was thinking. <laughs> like I know that like that has a lot more Spanish influence than Portuguese, but like that's what it's reminding me of. It's making me happy. I like, I like the mix. Oh, there's a panda. Or... 
All right. <laughs> and as I expected, there is a cruise ship. It's a pretty giant one. I think Royal Caribbean makes a lot of sense. So a lot of people are just walking by. We're like, I need to get back to the boat at this time. So I'm like, there's got to be cruise ships around here somewhere. We made it. Oh, feel that sea breeze. And the smell. Mm. Yeah. Oh, I miss this. And we're going to Lago soon. So that'll be really fun. You can definitely tell that we're by the ocean because there is tons of seagulls. My hair is blowing in the wind. Honestly, I'm a little bit scared that one of these is gonna poop on my head. I've seen like five of them poop. But this view is really cool because there's this bridge that goes across to like another city in Portugal. And there's like a little, like it looks like Christ the Redeemer statue. I know that that's in Brazil, but this one looks like a little mini version of it. We found a dinosaur that's never been discovered before. Okay, just kidding, but that actually is really cool. Looks like they made that out of sand, I think, and then like probably spray painted it. That's sand, right? Uh, yeah, it's definitely hey, sand. It's definitely it? sand, yeah. That's very impressive. <laughs> this Chuck Chuck is my favorite so far. They're all decorated in different ways. Look at that one. That one's actually pretty cool too. And that one? That one's just boring. I don't know why they're building these, but they're really, really cool. Actually, I'm pretty sure, I'm definitely sure that pina coladas are not from Portugal, but they have a pina colada stand right here. It's actually super fun. They're like in giant pineapples. So, you know, sometimes you gotta embrace the tourism too. They have this section right on the water. It kind of seems like you just sit here and relax, maybe enjoy some food, and you get to be really, really close to the waves and the rocks. I feel like I need to elaborate on when I said like our tourists rooting Lisbon. I feel like tourism is great, right? We're tourists. I know we're tourists. Nobody needs to comment that. I'm very well aware of that. But I feel like there is a difference between being a tourist and like learning about the culture and observing and soaking it in and like immersing yourself in it. But I feel like there is a difference when tourists come into a place or I guess big companies or people who are moving here, I don't know, and they completely take it over. I feel like I'm having like a hard time grasping like what is like the Portugal history here. I mean, the buildings are beautiful and I'm absolutely loving that. And we're doing a food tour tomorrow and food usually helps me connect with the culture. So hopefully that'll help a lot. This is just our first day here. So these are just like my first initial thoughts on it. Hopefully we'll get to learn a lot more about the history and the culture and get to experience it too. And not just feel like we're like in the middle of some tourist crazy place. I know that was a lot. In summary, I just think go to a place and observe it and immerse yourself in it and don't try to turn it into like your own thing because it kind of takes away from the magic of it, you know? I think the weather is a big factor on why so many people are moving here and so many people want to be tourists here. I mean, because it's right on the water, I don't think that it gets any like hotter or colder than this. It's just a nice 80 degrees right now feels really really nice in the shade and in the sun it's not too hot either and now it is time to try some food here we're going to time out market we were told by the receptionist at our hotel that it is really good food and it's decently cheap so that's our sweet spot looks like this row has tons and tons of flowers I think there's like different sections got to find the food one <laughs> this one I think if we turn left there's gonna be a lot of food options there is lots and lots of wine I'm sure most of it is port wine some bars, that's pretty cool. Tons and tons of people. This is a very fun vibe. Ooh, those pastries look good. Wow, that was very, very, very crowded. And I really wanted to like it in there, but it was just a little bit too packed for me. Some of the food did look really good. Like it definitely is a fun atmosphere if you can handle like tons of people like pushing and crowding. It's just not really our, our scene. So, I don't know, let's go find some Portuguese food somewhere else. Yeah. There was a traditional Portuguese sandwich in the timeout market that I really wanted to try, but there was just nowhere to sit. So we'll save that for another day. But honestly, I'm a little bit sad because like I'm staring at Asian street food right now and I've seen that everywhere. And I love Asian food, don't get me wrong. But I also just passed an Italian place, also lots of like halal places with falafel, which is great. I love all these foods, but I really want to eat some like 
food that is from Portugal and we're having a little bit of a hard time finding it. So I think we're gonna walk away from like the cruise port and this super busy area and hopefully we'll be able to find a restaurant that has food from Portugal there. These buildings are so beautiful. Look at all these bright colors. This is so, so, so cute. We found a restaurant, finally. It honestly took a while, but it looks really good. We got some bread here, and we got a soup, because I think that's really popular in Portugal, and we got some traditional cheese. I don't know what to try first. I'm gonna do the bread dipped in the soup. Mmm, ooh, really chewy. <laughs> oh, that soup is so good. I gotta try it without the bread. I don't know how to describe it. It's like like beans and tomato maybe, but like really creamy. <laughs> maybe like squash, but it might be squash and beans. I don't know, it's delicious though. Now let's try a bit of the traditional cheese. Oh, it's so good. Now we have some codfish here. Looks like there's potato on the side. Jenny got a steak and fries. Codfish was like the number one thing that I read that you have to try in Portugal. So I'm really glad that we're getting to try it on the first day. Looks like there's okay, the skins on it. You have this, uh, almost looks like olive oil. Don't know if it is, but that's like, there's a lot of it on the plate. Hmm. Very mild taste. There's not a whole lot going on. There's some onions on here that didn't get on the first bite. I love onions, so it's probably gonna be really good. I got the rump steak. It's honestly really big. We'll give it a try. This steak is so, so, so good. Dipped in this like butter herb sauce. Mmm, delicious. Herb. You want everybody to know that you pronounce it herb? Yeah. We were just eating our food and I noticed this beverage in the fridge over there, sumo. And I was like, well, that looks interesting. So I looked it up. It's supposed to be like a fruity drink. I don't know if it's even like soda, but I wanted to try it because I saw that it was Portuguese. It like almost tastes like soda, but it's not like that. It's like a little bit carbonated, but not like that much. There's like pulp in there too. So it's, I got the orange flavor. There's a pineapple one too. This, because there's pulp, it kind of feels almost like orange juice, like kind of a mix between that and soda. The food was delicious. I really, really, really like the soup. And the people were like so nice to the, the waiters there. They were just like, well, they started closing down because it was after like the lunch. I guess they closed between like three and like seven, I think. And so they, I was like, oh, maybe we should try to get out of here because everybody started leaving. But then they were like, oh no, you're still eating. Like you don't have to pay yet. And yeah. so they were just really and nice about it. And they were even like, it. do you want dessert, coffee? Like they weren't rushing us at all. They were very, very nice. And now on to our next thing we're doing. This dude's trying to parallel park on like the biggest incline I've ever seen. We did a good job. I think I now need to live in a pink apartment. Look at how cute this is. Imagine living here. So this might actually not be an apartment building considering there is these flags outside, but I still want to live here. Look at how cute it is. We took an Uber away from the main downtown area of Lisbon to come out by Bellum Tower. It's a little bit colder out here because we are right on the water, but I really like this spot because like across the little river here, there's like rolling hills with little houses on them. Honestly, I think over there would be like a cool place to be. Yeah, I agree. Here's the little one and here's the big one. This is very, very, very impressive. It's and, beautiful. And there's just water in between it. Like it's just built out on the water and they just anchored it to the ground. I've like never seen anything like this before. It's really cool. Here we are on the beach with the tower behind us. I am seriously blown away by this. We were just reading about it and it was built between 1514 and 1520. It was actually used to defend the city. So the tower was to look out, fight off any of the bad guys. 
I'm just impressed that it hasn't like sunk into the ocean yet. Like it must be like really deep down there to like continue like this, right? For like 500 years. <laughs> it's also a UNESCO World Heritage yes, Site now. Yes, it is. Also, there's a jellyfish right here. <laughs> So the tower actually is closed today because it's Monday. There's still a ton of people out here. Just can't imagine what it would be like if the tower was actually open. And on Mondays, I found out that a lot of places in Portugal are closed. Well, at least in this area. On like Sundays and Mondays are like the days where everything's closed and especially Monday. And while we're over here, we might as well check out a few of the other things to do in this area. So it turns out that we shouldn't have crossed the street on that bridge because now there's a really cool monument like right by the water and we can't get to it. Whoa, you can go up there too. There's people there. What? Okay, so this is actually what I was aiming for. I think there's a cathedral over here that looks really pretty that we saw in the Uber over here. And there's a really pretty building over here that we're gonna go explore. So we missed out on that monument, but we still have a pretty good view of it. So I think this was the right side of the road to be on. There's a cultural center and then planetarium right here. to what I thought was a cathedral. I honestly think at some point it definitely was, but now it's actually a museum. We were seriously just talking about how thirsty we are and we found this water bottle station, but is it weird if I just drink it with my mouth like under here? Is that gross? Go for it. Here, let me press it. Let me feel if it's cold. Oh, it's so hot. Oh. Uh, Let it run, click it. I don't wanna waste it's water. Colder. Keep it going, keep it going. There's like flies attacking me right now. I don't know why. You gotta go sideways. <laughs> you have to go sideways. I am going sideways. Hey, like this. It's all over your face. I think it's pretty good. I'm gonna have some more. <laughs> your head is like fully under it. That is not sideways. Using my technique now, I see. Something feels so wrong about this. With all of our research that we did about Italy, when we were there for a while, we didn't see a single drinking fountain out in the public, even though we saw that there was supposed to be a lot. And now, first day in Portugal, and we have one here. This building is very pretty, and honestly, there's like no tourists here. Like, there's like one or two, of course, but it's really pretty calm. So I really like it, it's really nice. And we have the beautiful view of the ocean over here with the monument. I really like this area, this is nice. And they have free water. I thought that this was a separate building from this, but it turns out I think they're all in one. It looks like they're connected. So it's really, really pretty. I love this dome. We have the monastery on this side and the church on that side. They're so pretty. They're like connected with one hallway, but the architecture is very different. Like this one's pointy. This one's got the dome. Both of them are really, really pretty though. There's little bars everywhere. So that's kind of fun. Tourist bus one, two, three. Four. There's a fifth one over there somewhere. So overall, I would say Lisbon is a very, very pretty city and there's lots of fun things to do. I do think that there is a lot of tourists though and it maybe took away some of the like cultural aspects of it. Like I think we're here in the shoulder season, like definitely like October. So I don't really like understand why there's so many people. It might be the most touristy place we've maybe ever been. I honestly think so. So that's pretty crazy, but we have been enjoying our time in Portugal. Just like all these little things that we're figuring out. I mean, we're just gonna get better at handling them and things like that. So we have a lot more Portugal videos coming your way. So thank you so much for subscribing if you wanna see more and we'll see you in the next one.